Today let's discuss how to use SmartThink sensors to monitor your sump pump. Make sure you have the basics in place first. This includes making sure the sump pump is rated correctly for the vertical height and volume you will need to pump, ensure all joints and connections are tight and secure, and make sure the check valves are installed correctly to flow the water away from the pump. The floats that turn on and off the pump must also move freely and not be obstructed. And lastly, make sure you use a battery backup system. Nothing needs to be disassembled or removed from the sump to install and use these sensors. The water leak sensor is located on the sump pump cover. The multi-sensor is cable tied to the pipe just above the check valve. And the smart outlet just goes in the outlet for the main sump pump and is only for those interested in monitoring electrical draw from the main pump. I will be using the classic SmartThings app to show you some setup screens and the notifications. Let's start with the water leak sensor. This is a SmartThings moisture sensor, which has two contacts on the bottom for detecting moisture. If you only use one smart sensor, this is the one to use. If something does fail with your sump pump, this will give you a somewhat early warning depending on where you locate the sensor. You should put it at a low point or location that will see the moisture first if there's a problem. Starting in the smart home monitor, I use the gear for configuration. Then we'll go to leaks and select the leak sensor. I have multiple leak sensors, so I'm using all my sensors. This is also where you configure your notifications from smart things, including text messages or just generic smart things notifications. So let's say it's a rainy, stormy night, and for some reason, your sump pump system has failed and water is starting to come in your basement. Here's what you might see. I'm showing the sensor directly in the SmartThings app, and you'll see that it indicates wet as it senses the moisture. Then we see the text message that water was detected by the sump pump water sensor, and I'll drag my notifications down, and you can also see the SmartThings app notification for the same thing. The Smart Home Monitor and SmartThings app also highlights the leak, and you can configure which alerts you want to see. Water leaks can be pretty serious and won't happen very often, so I'm okay erring on the side of a lot of notifications for them. Moving on to the SmartThings multi-purpose sensor, we will use the vibration feature of this sensor, so I have the two halves taped together since I don't need them separated as would be used for, let's say, a door or window sensor. I use the cable tie to secure it just above the check valve on the discharge pipe. When the pump is running, it shakes the pipe enough for the sensor to detect it, and that's how we know that the pump is running. I configure this sensor to send a notification when the acceleration is detected. This lets me know how often it's running, and I can keep tabs on it during higher risk situations like in the spring or when snow is melting, or if we do have a heavy storm coming through. I also might use it to get insight if the pump is having a hard time keeping up with water going into the sump. Similar to the moisture sensor, I can get a variety of notifications and see the history of how often it's running. In this extreme example, it's running about every 20 to 60 minutes. So during times like this, you wouldn't want it to fail. The basement could get flooded pretty quickly at that rate. The last sensor is the SmartThings outlet. This is probably the least important of the sensors I covered, and you could rightly argue that it introduces another failure point. But the engineer in me likes to have data information, and the smart outlet can tell you how much wattage the device plugged into it is using. So in our case, the main sump pump is plugged into it. It's rare, but in some cases, the pumps get stuck on, meaning it won't shut off. In those cases, most likely a float is stuck in the on position due to it shifting in the sump or it got hung up on some wires or other components. The potential problem with using a smart outlet is that it can be turned off, and that could either be done on the outlet itself or in the app. So the only special configuration I have for it is to notify me if it's turned off. So here we can see that the outlet is turned on, and now I turn it off, at which point I receive an alert that it was turned off. But the main useful information that I want to get from it is here. It shows that the pump was ramped up to about 500 watts when it's running, and then I can also see that it ramps back down when it's done. So if I have some reason to think that something is wrong and making it run continuously, I can check this in the app.
So those are the three SmartThings sensors that I'm using on my sump pump system. It doesn't replace the basics of proper sump pump setup, but it can add an extra layer of security and peace of mind to reduce the chances of potential water damage in your home. So please like and subscribe to the channel and let me know in your comments how you've used smart home sensors and if you have interest in other smart home videos. Thanks for watching.